Hi guys, welcome back to designing automation framework from scratch. So let's see, uh, as a topic of today's discussion, we have been looking at branching and merging. We have seen how to create new branches and how to switch to the branch and create some commits and then how to do a basic merge. So let's see what we have covered. We have seen how to create a new branch and verify the head pointer and then check out to the latest branch and then we'll verify the head pointer pointing to. And we have made some changes and commits and the changes were pointing on to the new branch. And then we have seen after merging, we have seen how to do the basic merge. And post merging, we have seen where does the master branch point to and where does the new branch point to. And this is what we have completed. And now we'll be seeing what's merging, uh, what are the different types of merge, and what type of merge happens at what point of time, and what is an alternative to merging. So over here you can see there are two types of merging, that is merging and rebasing. And merging can be further divided into two types, uh, further divided into two, that is fast forward merge. Fast forward merge happens whenever the present latest commit on the branch and the previous commit where the master branch is pointing to or a direct one-to-one -one relationship. That is you can directly navigate from the commit that the master branch is pointing to and the latest to the latest branch the comment that is pointing to. So at that point of time, we'll be able to do a fast forward merge. If, a, for example, you are checked out the new branch, you created a new branch, checked out the new branch, and created some changes, and then you are committed, and then post that, you are navigated back. You checked out the main branch, that is the master branch, and after that, you have created some more changes on the master branch, and then you are committed changes to the master branch. At this point of time, when you are trying to do a merge, so there is no direct one-to-one -one relationship. So let's see from the uh, pictorial representation over here. So we have seen the lit, uh, all the changes we have synced to our local repository post that we have made commit C1. So at the point of time, whatever our master is being pointed, the head points out to the master branch and the master branch points out to C1. That is a commit where we are syncing up the local repository with the current working directory. So that is the first step. Post that, we have created one branch named as branch B2. And that branch is also pointing to C1. But since we didn't check out the branch B2, and we are uh, currently continuing with branch master, so the head pointer points to master instead of branch B2. That is step two. And in step three, we will check it out from master branch to branch B2. So at that point of time, the head pointer will be pointing out to the branch master to branch 2 from there, the changes are going to take over. So in step 4, what we have done is that we have made some changes on the branch 2 and then we have made some com uh, we have made a commit. So the new commit is C2. So at this point of time, the branch moves from the branch to pointing at C1 commit moves to C2 commit and also the head pointer moves along with it pointing to C2. But master branch will be pointing at C1. So this is at step 4 and in step 5 we had made a merge. So that is fast forward merge. So why I'm saying that the fast forward merge is that There is a small problem over here. So actually, in this pictorial representation, when we have done merge, the head pointer should point to master instead of branch B2. So over here, why I'm saying it is a fast forward merge? Because this latest change or the latest commit in the branch B2, that is the commit C2, is directly accessible from the commit that the master is pointing, master branch is pointing. So C1 commit is directly accessible by C2, where two different branches are pointing it. So when we are a direct transistor, when C1 is a direct transistor to C2, at this point of time, we'll be able to make the fast forward merge. This is called as a fast forward merge. 
so this is up to uh, what we have seen in the previous video now we are going to view about the three way merge so in three way merge assume now we have uh, deleted this branch b2 and we are created a new branch by name branch 2 assume like branch 3 instead of branch 2 change it into branch 3 so for our naming convention we are changing it to branch 3 So this is not branch 3, uh, branch 2 instead of the market as branch 3 and this is also branch 3. So assume here we have created branch, uh, deleted branch 2 and we had created a new branch, branch 3. So at the point of time, we will be having branch 3 pointing to C2 and master is also pointing to C2. Post that, we will be checking into branch 3 and then we will be creating few commits. We will be making some changes on branch 3 and then the latest change, latest commit is C4. So the branch B3 will be pointing out to B4 and they add pointer points to this particular branch, the commit C4. But master will be pointing out to commit C2. this point of time we will check out to branch we will check out from branch v3 to master branch and then we will make some changes in master branch and post that we will make commit so that is the commit c5 now we can see the commit in branch 3 that is c4 is not a direct transistor for c5 so c5 is not a direct transistor where the master is pointing master branch is pointing so this commit is not a direct transistor and it is not directly accessible to C4. So in order to access C4, uh, C4 to access C5, we need to navigate to this particular path. That the common item, common commit over here to navigate is C2. So this is a common commit or common ancestor for C5 and C4 to access C4 to access C4 to access C5. This is a common ancestor. So it is not direct relationship between C4 and C5. So at this point of time, we are having a snapshot one at, master, uh, at C5 commit and this snapshot at C4 commit. Snapshot 2 at C4 commit. So snapshot 1 is where we wanted to merge the commit to and snapshot 2 is the uh, from where we, were, uh, we wanted to commit the changes. That is, the changes in snapshot 2, we wanted to merge it to master branch. So using these two snapshots, we'll be creating a new commit, C6, and then we'll be having a new snapshot with these changes incorporated. And the master will be pointing out now to C6, that is, it has been moved from C5 to C6, and the head pointer points to this particular latest commit and branch will be pointing out to the previous commit that is C4. So you can see over here when we do a fast forward merge, you can see the relationship was straightforward and it was a clean history. But when we uh, when it happens to be a three-way merge, the relationship is not so clear and when we are uh, trying to uh, track back changes, it was very difficult but there is always so much of confusion. So to avoid this thing, it was not a clean history. So to avoid these kind of things, we'll be seeing it is coming to play to overcome the three-way merge. So what three-way, uh, what, what are the advantage that rebasing gives over three-way merge? When you're doing a rebasing concept, according to rebasing concept, what happens exactly is that 
in short creating the merge like this in reversing this will be clear this relationship will not be established so the commit c3 and c4 will be applied on top of c5 and then it will not be created c6 will not be created instead of instead the commit what are the changes in commits c3 and c4 were available those will be taken and that will be applied on top of c5 the master will be pointing out at c4 so we can delete the branch p2 now we can see now the history was very clear so you can see now c4 answers to c3 and c3 answers to c5 and c5 answers to c2 and c2 answers to c1 so the history when we are tracking back the changes in history it was very good so this is what uh, the necessity of rebasing rebasing gives a cleaner history than three way merge so we have seen pre pictorial color representation now let's see the same thing while working on practical so i think we have understood the concept of rebasing three way merge and fast forward merge fast forward merge the prerequisite is that the commits that are being merged should be having a one to one relationship that is ancestral relationship so it should be directly accessible only then three way uh, uh, fast forward merge is possible but when you are going through a three way merge it is not possible because commits are two different commits will be having a common ancestral commit so they are diverged from a common point of time so that's the reason we will not be able to make the fast forward commit fast forward merge Uh, so we need to go. If we are doing a commit, it becomes a three-way commit. It takes two snapshots, and then all the changes will be deployed to a new commit, and then a new snapshot will be created on the top on top of the commit. So the history was not so clear, and uh, there was always a clumsy relationship. So in order to avoid that, we are going. Uh, we'll be going for rebasing. When we go for rebasing, the uh, there will be no. Uh, new history created new uh, there will be like the changes in the branch that needs to be merged will be taken up and been applied on top of the latest uh, the master branch the commit uh, that is been pointed over the master branch so that we have a cleaner relationship and it is always a one to one relationship and it is an ancestral relationship it is directly accessible from one to one so we have a cleaner history at that point of time so it appears almost like a fast forward merge instead of three way merge So let's see in uh, practical. So at this point of time, we have seen like C one is a commit, here C two is a commit, is branch one and master pointing to. Let me delete. deleting this branch so get branch hyphen d branch name that is branch 1 so this branch was deleted And now let's see the git C two, git C I two, graphical 
version of it. And then let's view the history. So you can see it was not changed. It was not refreshed. So this has been deleted here, a refresh problem, so it was not refreshing so fast. So you can see, branch B1 is deleted, and then we are left with only master branch. So you can also see over here, if you specify git check out branch 1, it says that path specific branch 1 did not match any files you want to get. So since it was deleted. So now let's now get to git ci2. It was not interpreted. So it was taking time to refresh. So let's now get over here and this will be from here written. So in the local branch, the branch has been deleted and both were pointing out. So this was the commit that had been made by branch B1 and that we are merged to the master branch, that's what it shows. And then uh, that we have, once uh, merge has been completed, there is no use of branch B1, so we have deleted the branch B1. So at this point of time, we are having C1 and C2 commits. So now let's create new branch. Let's create a new branch. Switch to new branch and branch 1, branch 2 and we are directly checking out the particular branch so that pointer will be pointing out so instead of that just click out over this and now I will get to the git view again you can see branch 2 is created and it points out to the same branch so if we go over here So let's type git status. So we are currently on branch master and there are no um, it is everything clean, there is no unstressed changes. So it was not it was C pointing to the branch master, not the branch C1. So let's make some changes in branch master itself. So I am creating some changes in this particular point. Next up branch. Commit C3. So now let me open the git perspective and then git saving and then let me add it up over here and then let commit master branch commit C3. Click commit. Now go over here and see the changes. on branch master and this is what we are doing now let's now get back to git 
and see now branch b2 is pointing out to the earlier commit and match is pointing out to the latest commit c3 so let's view the same thing in the graph curve with graph clip here let's try to So we can see branch B2 is pointing out to the earlier commit, but branch master is pointing out to the latest commit. So it has been diversed. And the head is pointing to the master once the yellow color indicates that head pointer points to master. Now let's check out. code to branch B2 make some changes and then have a comment so we have checked out that we are switching to branch B2 we are now on branch B2 you can see over here this tick indicates that we are on branch B2 which is pointing out to the Changes made by branch B1 and merge to master. So we can see the changes that have been made in the master branch will not be available. We have made that commit C3 is a new line of code that we introduced as Facebook. And then branch 2. Commit C4. Save it. And then now get to pick view. Add it to the staging area. And then forward the commit message. Changes have been committed. You can see it was reflected in branch B2. A new commit has been generated. So, master is pointing out to branch C3, or commit C3, and branch B2 is pointing out to C4, and the head now is pointing out to branch B2. So, now in the pictorial representation, we are at this point. Zoom it just like this. So assume we have diverged from a common ancestor commit that is C2. Master has master branch is having a new commit C4 and branch B3 is having branch B2 is having a new commit called as C3. So this is the place where we are in our practical approach. Now if we are doing a merge, so in order to do a merge onto the master branch, what we need to do is we need to now get to the master branch so that is we need to switch back to the master branch then switch to master so you can see the 
pointer hit pointer points to master now and now we need to merge it if we click on this one before that let's see the graphical view too it's here too and verify the official ones so you can see over here now there was a diversion the master point points to commit C3 and the branch pointer points to C4 and the common ancestor branch was branch B1 commit that is over here so let's see what happens on our merge now we want to merge it now we are currently on master branch and we are going to merge it we are merging the master branch so in branch B2 onto master branch so you can see over here on the master branch select a branch or the tag to merge into the master branch so you can see master branch is being merged with sorry branch 2 is being merged with master branch the commits for C4 and C3 are being merged so you can see over here there was a merge conflict so what is the concept of merge conflict? And here what we have done is the same line of code that is the line number 7 we have made the changes so uh, in line number 7 that is C4 commit will be having that is made by branch B2 master branch commit sorry branch B2 commit C4 and master branch we have done the same line of uh, same line we have changed it and we are having master branch commit C3. So this is where Git has a real confusion whether I need to go with uh, the change that has been made by the master branch or I need to go with branch V2. So at this point of time, Git becomes unconclusive and lets the decision for us. So you can see the label decorations over here. It clearly shows the red mark. This is the label decoration indicator which shows there is a conflict and it shows the file which is having a conflict. So you can see over here it represents the conflict start and over here we need to understand where the conflict started with line of code and in the first file what are the changes that have been conflicting and where is the second where is the lines of code in the second file that is been conflicting. So you can see over here this is the starting of the conflict that I had pointing to. So this is the lines of code that has been on the master branch. So it says system to output printer and master branch commit C3. This is the line of code that we have changed. And this is the line. And the end of the changes that have been common across. So just let me copy this one. And let's just have a better explanation. So you can see these are the lines of commit conflict this is the conflict starting and this is the conflict ending so this is the divider that divides the common line of code between the master branch and the branch b2 so this is a common line of code that has been conflicting between master branch so this is the line of code that has been committed in the master branch and this is the line of code that has been committed in branch b2 So at the same file, at the same place, you have made at the same line of code, you have made these changes. So let's see in the particular uh, files so that we can understand it better. Let us now get to bit perspective and then verify it in history. So since it was in conflict, we will not be able to uh, 
you will be able to verify this line of code. So it is already in conflict, we are not able to see, verify these things in history. But what we have made the changes, it is the same line, that is the line of 4, which was might be the 7 is the line of 7 or 8 is the line, the same and the same line number, we have made the changes, that is system total control of the line, we have printed all these messages, and in branch B2, we have printed all these messages. So that's the reason it is uh, showing out a conflict. Now let's Resolve the conflict. So first remove these things. And then save it. So then the changes from here are the possible master branch. But a new commit has been created, a new snapshot has been created with different snapshots. So this we can remove from the master. So we need to make the computer data, and then we will make this slider. So 
So the previous thing will also be the same thing, but it's slightly different thing like that. It will not create the uh, branch redirection from C4 to C3, that's it. It will be the actual from C1 to C2, and all the changes from C3 and C3 components will be added on the other C4. So it will be the it will show C4 followed by C3, followed by C4. So that's what we will be pointing on the latest one, that is C4. And all the changes from C3 and C4 will be added on to C4. What's the difference between rebasing and review match? Then we are seeing how to uh, resolve the conflict and we are seeing the concept of merging, which is the uh, fast forward match and table match and also rebasing. So this is all about uh, branching and merging. In the next topic, the next video, let's discuss on how to create a uh, data platform and how to collaboration. Thank you very much.